Hi, my name is Tony. Do you remember the old days when we had whiteboards in meeting rooms or in classrooms where we could express our ideas, collaborate with others in the meeting? We could even stick post-it notes on the whiteboard. Well, in a Teams meeting, we can do all of this using Microsoft Whiteboard. And in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to get the most out of the whiteboard. I'm gonna be focusing mainly on the tools rather than drawing stuff like this, but I will leave a link in the description of this video if you want to use it for a bit of inspiration. Before I dive into today's content, if you want to learn how to get the most out of Microsoft, then by clicking subscribe and hitting the bell will put you on the right track. Okay, are you ready? I know I am, then let's go. So here I am in a meeting that's already started. Now if my meeting window looks different to yours, that's because I'm using the new meeting experience in Microsoft Teams. If you want to switch this on, just go to your profile, then settings, and then enable this option. If you can't see this option, then go back to your profile and check for updates. Currently, this new meeting experience is only available in Windows 10. You don't have to have the new meeting experience to be able to share a whiteboard. You can do it on the standard option. So let's start sharing. So if I click on this icon here, and I'm gonna select whiteboard, and this opens up a basic whiteboard. And on this whiteboard, you've got pens, you've got a text box, you've got post-it notes, and you've got an eraser. Now, if you're looking for more options, such as being able to import whiteboards or export, changing the background and a host of other great features, then what you need to go for is opening the app. If you don't have the app installed already, then get the Windows app. And this will make it available from the start menu in Windows 10. And this will allow you to create your whiteboards in advance of your meetings. So let's click open the app because I've got it installed already. Now the view for your meeting participants won't change automatically. If they too want the advanced features, then they would need to select open in app. Otherwise, they just get the standard view. They'll still be able to see all your drawings, they just won't have the same toolbar as you. Up here at the top, you've got options to see who's in your meeting and to invite others. Down here at the bottom, you've got your toolbar. But before I get into the toolbar, let me show you settings. Now, if you're going into this for the first time, and ideally do this outside your meeting, but go to Help. So Help gives you a list of frequently asked questions from the Microsoft website. I will put a link to this in the description of this video. Now, one of the things to bear in mind, external people won't be able to see your whiteboard at this time. The suggestion from the Microsoft website is it's something that they're working on. So this may come in the future. Another thing to bear in mind is that when you're recording a meeting, it won't show the whiteboard. However, meeting participants will be able to access the whiteboard after the meeting. Going back to settings, the accessibility checker is for the visually impaired, and I will go through that later. Next up, you've got clear canvas. So if your canvas gets a bit messy, you can always just clear it and start again. Toolbar location allows you to move the toolbar. So at the moment, it's down here at the bottom. I prefer it on the left, so I'm gonna click here. Another nice feature in the settings is format background. So you can change the colors of your background. Some nice pastel colors here. I'm gonna switch it back to white. And you've also got a grid background too. Now I would recommend using a grid background because this helps you to scale the size of the images. So I'm just gonna go for this hybrid one. And you can always just change it as you go along. The next section is your export options, and I'll come to this later. Then you've got these switches. At the moment, I've got ink to shape and ink to table selected. So let me show you what these do. So over here on the left, I've got my toolbar because I moved it there, and I'm gonna click on the ink option. Currently, it's set to black. I'm gonna go for blue. If I click it once, blue is selected. If I click it again, I get a choice of more colors, and I can also choose the thickness of my pencil and then I just simply draw in my shape so I'm going to do a circle and as you can see there it's smoothed the circle off let me do another one it's made a triangle let's try something else and it turns it into a rectangle and this is all because 
of ink to shape in the settings. If I add a line in the middle of this rectangle, it turns it into a table. So that's what the ink to table option does. And if I click on this plus sign, it will add a column and then I can add rows. And if I want to, I can then just type in my letters or text, whatever I want to do and pop those in. If I wanted to get back to the other options on the toolbar, I just click the tick and it will take me here. And then from here, perhaps I can go for a post-it note. And I can put my post-it note into there. Now, before I get into the other options in the toolbar, let me go back to settings. This time I'm going to select active pen and I'm also going to select object snapping. So object snapping allows me to move the shapes and click them into place a lot more easily. Now the active pen, going back to that one, you would switch that on if you've got a stylus pen or a tablet pen. And this allows you to use your stylus and a mouse together. Let me show you how this works. I'm running out of space here, so I'm just gonna, let's use my finger, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And you'll notice as well, by switching on the active pen, the toolbar shows everything. So this allows me, I can use my stylus pen to select an option here, Let's go for red this time, draw in a shape. And then if I want to use the mouse to click another option, I can do that. Or I can use the mouse to scroll and to move things around. So Active Pen lets me, allows me to use the pen and the mouse together. Whereas before, I was having to use the mouse to click the ink option and then I could draw my shapes in. So like I said, if you've got a stylus pen, and use the active pen option. Okay, so looking at some other options we've got down here in the toolbar, let me just draw in another shape. We're gonna do a circle this time. Now, if I want to move that shape, I can. I can use my finger or I can use the mouse. And if I hold my finger there and just drag it, I can then move that shape. Move this square over. If I wanna link these two together, I can use the pen, but it doesn't fix the line. It's a bit of a wobbly line. So what I can use, if I want to be precise, let's get rid of that one. So I'll click on it and delete in. I can use a ruler. Now the ruler always goes in an angle like this at first, but what I can do using my fingers, I can then just twist it into position. And now I use my pen or I can use my finger I don't have a pen, just drag along and I can connect to a nice straight line. Now to remove the ruler, you just simply click on the ruler. That takes it away. And if I wanted to make that line into dashes, then I can, I just select the eraser. So I'm using the mouse, I'm just used to doing that. Uh, then I use my pen and I can just make that a dotted line or dashed line. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other options there on the left hand side. So I can go to A for text, brings up a little text box, can move that text box into a shape, type in my text, then click away, so that's great. So that's your text box. So I'm gonna click on the post-it, drag it over. I can resize this if I want to by clicking here, resizing. With the ink selected, I can use the stylus pen if I wanted to. Rather than typing something in, I could actually write something in. I'm not a very neat writer. That's supposed to say next steps. And there's, there is a great little option actually. If I use the mouse, if I click on the word here, you've got this magic wand. And this magic wand will smooth out the text. There we go, look at that. Let's try this one. Okay, so we put in steps instead of steps. Let's try that one again. So let's click it. There we go, that's a bit better. And if I want to, I can resize that. So it makes it easier to read. And it all depends how good your handwriting is. You might prefer to use the text tool. Other things you can do with these post-it notes, let's bring in another one. Is that if you wanted to, you can change the color just by uh, clicking on it once. And then you've got your palette here, choose the color. And you can even overlay these post-it notes if needed. Okay, so let's move up the page a bit. Let's look at some of these other options. I'm gonna go to images now. So you've got an image menu. 
So from the image menu, you've got the library. So this allows you to bring in something locally. So maybe you've got uh, an image saved on your laptop. You've got Bing image. So this will use Bing to search for an image or you've got your camera where you can use your webcam on your laptop or computer. Uh, I'm gonna go for Bing image. It says you can use the pen to write something in, but I'm just gonna click in instead and just type in, let's type in working from home. By default, it shows you all the images that are Creative Commons only. So these images can be freely used. For more information on this, uh, check out the link here. If you wanna wind a range of images, then click show all results. For the purpose of this training, I've got enough images here, so I'm just gonna go for this one. If I click it again, it pops it into my canvas. Let's close on this one. So you've got this toolbar on the image with a few options. So the magic wand I will show you in a moment, but you've got a like button here. So anyone can like this, like this image in the meeting. If you click on the thumbs up here, it would show who liked it. You've got the option to lock it. So this would lock it into the background. So I can't move that one now. Can't do anything with that shape. It's locked into the background. To unlock it, you just right click and you've got the unlock option. I've got options here to copy it, to delete it. And if I go to more options, I can cut it or add alternative text. Now the alternative text, this is all links to the accessibility checker, which is useful for the visually impaired, as the screen reader will read out the name or the alternative text of this shape. And if you wanted to go through all the shapes in your canvas and add the alternative text, then go to settings, accessibility checker. You've got all your different shapes there. So if I click on this one, it gives me a chance to label it. So this is add in alternative text. So this is uh, useful for the visually impaired, for the screen readers, and it will come off that list. So let's go back to the toolbar on the left. If I click on the plus, we've got a range of options here, which I think a lot of these are self-explanatory. So you can add like lists, you can add a note grid. So this is a, a grid of those post-it notes. I can show you that one now. It just brings up a, a grid of post-it notes, which you can work with. You can add your text or ink in some handwriting. Uh, templates, there's a host of templates to choose from. So let's go for this SWOT one. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I click on that one. Very large at the moment, so let's zoom out. Just roll in the mouse. So it creates the structure for you. And uh, to complete these boxes, you've got like your post-it notes here. So I can just click on the box. And if I want to edit that one, I just click on the pencil. And then I can type in my text. As you can see, the templates are really useful and help to bring a bit of structure to your whiteboard. And remember, you can set these up in advance of your meeting by going directly to the whiteboard from your start menu. Okay, let's continue to look at the other options. And then these last three options allows you to insert a PDF, a Word document, or a PowerPoint file. Now remember, you're working on a big canvas here. So far, I've been sort of scrolling around, but you can just use your mouse scroll out to see the full canvas and you can sort of navigate around so I'm rolling in with my mouse now to have a look up here at the top I've got a back button if I click on this one it will take me to my whiteboards so I'm going to bring in a whiteboard that I prepared earlier and for this one I'm going to go for the website review so perhaps I'm having a meeting about my website with my team and I'm looking for their feedback on the design of how to change it or what should be changed. So using the inking options or maybe the text boxes or post-it notes, people can then draw on top of this image like so. If you're looking to export any of these whiteboards, then you can. It's just a matter of going to settings and you've got these three options here. So you can export it as an image and then save it locally. You can post it to any team, any team that you're a member of. You don't have to be the owner. And you also have the option to email this whiteboard out. So if you wanted to send it to anybody that wasn't part of this meeting, you've got those options there. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Teams, 
then watch these videos here. And I will see you in the next video.